From the Crush Studio in sunny Florida, this is the Disney Crush Podcast. And now your two tempests in a teacup, Dave and Tony Ann. On this week's The Disney Crush Podcast, Dave and Tony Ann interview two of the most fascinating people. We'll have a little bit of Facebook, maybe a little bit of news, and hopefully a lot of fun along the way. Episode 301, that's 301 episodes of the Disney Crush Podcast, is starting right now. Well, Tony, and I can't wait to find out who we're going to have on the show because you've made this a big mystery, so I have no clue who's coming on the show tonight. Yeah, we're going to interview two of the most fascinating people. Okay, well, I'm sure they're very fascinating, articulate, (laughs) beautiful, amazing, wonderful, just outstanding human beings. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Hmm. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. All right. Well, before we do that, you got any news or any breaking news or I have nothing, absolutely nothing because I'm just, yeah, I have nothing. I haven't, I've, I've been a bad, bad podcaster. Sad news, Disney, we, Disney Crush, we used to do like a death a week, but we mm. haven't had that lately. Mm. But unfortunately, Paul Rubin, who was Pee Wee Herman, better known as Pee Wee Herman, did pass away this past week. And um, he had a lot of, he did a lot of work for Disney. He, of course, was um, Rex. Oh, no. Um, Hang on. Hang on. What the frig? I'm not doing this tonight, people. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, what's up? Where you at? I'm recording the podcast. Oh, dang. All right. <laughs> yeah, we changed uh, days, remember? We're now we're doing it on Thursdays. Yeah. What you need? Yeah, and I'll remember that. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, if you're going to run to the store, mm-hmm. we need cat food. Oh. Your little kitty cats need a little food. Oh, so. oh okay. Uh, I'll, get, uh, I'll get right on that. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, you go out, grab it. Okay. Okay, okay bye. All right, bye. Oh my, oh my God. And it continues. <laughs> so Paul Rubens, who um, better known as Pee Wee Herman, passed away this past week and he did a lot of work for Disney. He was, of course, Captain Rex in the original Star Tours, who then is now DJ Rex in Oga's Cantina. Um, so he did the voice for that. But he also did work on some animated voice work. Tron Uprising, Star Wars Rebels, Phineas and Ferb, Teacher's Pet, the Hercules TV series. He did voice work in The Nightmare Before Christmas, Flight of the Navigator, and Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. So he did a lot of work for Disney. And I mean, personally, in my childhood, he was, I used to watch him every every weekend, every Saturday. I used to watch the Pee Herman show. So it was a big deal for me. It was one of my favorite movies as a kid, too. Yeah. You know, he was big adventure. So he was very talented. I know he had some troubles, some struggles, but um, he was a very talented person who uh, was kind of groundbreaking with what he did with his character. Uh, so, yeah, he'll be no, missed. He, yeah, he was great. Yeah. He, yeah. He lived in Sarasota. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yep. That's where, yeah, his, some of his problems happened, but not a big deal. I mean, when you think about what happened, it's, you know, hello, whatever. Could have been yeah. a lot worse. So yeah, that's all so. I'll say about that. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, from Sarasota. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we have any other real news, Dave. Do you have any news? No, I told I said yeah. earlier that I'm just I'm 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 bad, bad, bad co host because I just check our page to I, make sure that Disney crushed it and report anything or anything. I, no, I have some news, but I'm not gonna disclose it. We talked about it earlier. I could talk about some stuff I'm not gonna talk about. No, I don't think we need to go there with that. Okay. Universal has announced that Minion Land will be opening on August 11th officially, but I think that they're doing like a lot of soft openings already. And uh, you heard about smell offense on parade. <laughs> Disney is working with Sensi to have a scratch and sniff adventure in Storybook Circus, which is by Dumbo. Sensi is now the official home fragrance of fragrance of Walt Disney World. So, Smellifants on Parade. Wow. So, it's not... Um, so, Orange Bird's yeah. butt is no more? I don't know. Now, we got to smell elephant butts. Oh, okay. I think I'd rather smell orange butts. But. I think so, too. hmm hmm That's I, all I got for I that. do have some news. Uh, a really oh, good... You uh, I Well, I just remembered, you know, my little bitty pea brain. A really good friend of ours, 
Talmadge Hunt is in Disneyland right now as we are recording. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Have fun, Talmadge. Yep. So I hope he's having a great time. And We do want to spend, send a special thank you to our dear friend, Wendy Fox. You know what you did. And we appreciate you. We always, we always will appreciate you. And to our friends who sent us each little presents this week, thank you. We got nice picture books with all the photographs from TDC 2023. Uh, as a as a um, congratulations for our 300th episode, so we want to thank you guys for that. Everybody that participated with that, and um, Dave, do we want to talk about what happened to us last week at all? Do we have any words about that? Um. Well, it was surprising and yeah. heartfelt. I mean, it was just yeah, a lot of emotions were going yeah. Overwhelming. As it was, yeah, as it was happening, yeah, it just was. It was all coming around. <laughs> when yeah. it first started happening, it was a little frustrating. Yeah, but then we kind of figured out what was going on. Yeah. Because we had these very hard uh, to get interview interviewers coming on. We had them all lined up and then our friends, you know, mm -hmm. threw that whole plan off. Oh, and we do want to say, I know that last week's show, we said that Amanda Lamb and Tori Hunt were going to come on and talk about losing their children at Disney. That will be next week's show because... The hunts are in Walt Disney World right now. So we will be recording that next week. I want. I just want to say, too, that along with that um, remarkable, amazing book of all TDC happenings that uh, you guys sent us, I was actually sent a Tesla. Interesting. Yes. And I will say that it's getting bigger because I know that Dave sent me one. It was kind of small. This one's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. The scale is getting a little bigger. So I'm... Hoping maybe mm -hmm. by the end of the year, it keeps increasing its size. And eventually, <laughs> the the right size one will eventually pull up. Yeah. That'll be nice. So, thank That'll you. Nice. Thank you for that. And I've been playing with it. It's really fun. It kind of goes on its own. You, you know, pull it back and it goes. And I've been having all kind of fun with it. Tim, like I'm inside. Mm. I made a little stick figure of myself and stuck it in there like I'm driving. <laughs> it's really fun. Great. Mm, yeah. So, exciting in my life is. Playing with toy Teslas. I think that's how real Teslas work, too. You pull them back and they go. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. They go really fast, though. Yeah. I don't know if I can afford one of those, though. No, they, you know, the batteries and go bad and you got to buy like a brand new car. You know, it's like buying yeah. a brand new car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I would probably run out of, yeah, electricity halfway to where I want to go and I won't be able to find a plug somewhere. Yeah. No, oh, well. You could just borrow Tim Trackers when you want to go somewhere. I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, he just goes back and forth from his house to. Disney World, which is maybe what five minutes away, right? So he's and good. He plugs in right there. Yeah, he's there. good. Yeah. You don't have to go that far. All right, Tony. Well, you got anything for Facebook? I do. Give the people what they want. I don't know if they want it, but they're gonna get they it. They want. They're it. gonna get it they anyway. On <laughs> this week's the good, the bad, and the ugly of Facebook. <laughs> So I'm going to I'm going to settle a little uh disagreement here. Okay. The question came across, so please someone settle this. I say it's quicker from the Swan and Dolphin to Epcot if you go via the boardwalk. A friend says it's quicker if you go via the beach club. Please save us steps. Who's right? So, having stayed at the Dolphin and the Swan multiple times, I can tell you that if you're staying at the Swan, there is no doubt the boardwalk is the way to go to Epcot. If you're looking as the crow flies, just the, you know, if you could just walk direct from Dolphin to Epcot, sure, Beach Club on the map looks closer, looks like the shorter route. And like I said, as the crow flies, it's definitely the shorter route. But what you need to take into account is when you Walk from Dolphin to Beach Club, there are these, I guess, canals or channels, and you have to walk around them. So it's like zigzag back and forth. And actually, it is probably more steps to go the Beach Club way than to just cross the bridge over to Boardwalk. So because that's more of a straight shot. So I would say, in my experience going the boardwalk is is a shorter walk for both the dolphin and the swan 
And if you really want to save steps, just take the boat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, those little ponds are a pain in the butt to walk around. Yeah, walking around them. You're like, if I could day. just, if I could just fly over that, walk on water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I could just be have Jesus shoes or something and just. <laughs> Maybe you should market those, Dave. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, just come right over that because I'm, especially when you're tired, you're like, oh gosh, another pond. Like one yep. after another. Yeah, look over those little paddle boats. I'm like, oh, maybe I can grab those little paddle boats they over there. Those swan boats, yeah. 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 Okay, I, I want you to tell me if you think this person is a troll. Mm. Has anyone been to Disneyland, Orlando, recently? Universal Studios, specifically. Looking for advice on how to do it as cheaply as possible and wondering if anyone has achieved this. I can't figure out the ticket structure and where to get an actual cost, find out how many parks there are, etc. We have family that live in Florida and would like to get tickets as Christmas gifts for their kids this year. I guess they release availability in December. We are a family of five. Hmm. So they want to know about Disneyland in Orlando, specifically Universal Studios, and they're having trouble finding ticket information for Universal Studios at Disneyland Orlando. I wonder why they're having trouble finding ticket information about Universal Studios in Disneyland Orlando. Oh, I don't know. I think they left out SeaWorld too. I mean, they should. Just yeah. So I don't know if they're a troll or not. I just thought that was amusing. Hmm. So. Well, those are the people that if they eventually do get to go, will never want to go back again because yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no planning. There's no nothing going on there. That's trouble, 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 trouble. Hmm. That's really all I have. That, that was, um, let me see. Let me just double check. That was, that was actually last week's Facebook that I was going to share. Um, and we got interrupted by some people. Oh, yeah. I, while you're looking, I got one here. I'm getting mixed signals. A coworker of mine just came back from Disney with this popcorn bucket and said, I could use it for my trip next month. Will I be able to get the $2.25 refills? Question mark. Someone said you need to show a receipt, a receipt to get refills. Okay, no, you can use their popcorn bucket. You can use one that's five years old, 10 years old, mm-hmm. probably 20 years old if you got one hanging around somewhere. They're not going to ask you for a receipt. Just take it and you can get your 15 cents worth of popcorn for $2.25. Absolutely. So they're not going to care. They're making so much uh uh-uh, money off those that popcorn. Yeah, they'll fill up two of them if you got two. You know, I bet if you walk if you were walking along and just said, "Hey, can I borrow your popcorn bucket for a minute?" and just went over there, they, you could fill that one up too. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So, no, go for it. Doesn't matter. They'll fill them up. Did you see the picture of the blue milk that I posted last night? No. Yeah, so the the blue the milk stand which you're bitter about because apparently milk is not a snack. It's, it's not. a drink. It's not. Okay. So um, Galaxy's Edge is now home to a new specialty Star Wars drink um, with a name that will resonate with fans of Star Wars, the Young Jedi series. The Tenu Swirl Crunchy Cereal Drink is named after the Outer Rim planet that is home to the temple featured on the series. The drink takes blue milk and adds raspberry jelly swirl and tops it with rainbow crunchy candies. <laughs> You can pick up this drink at the milk stand in Galaxy's Edge. And if you look at the picture, it looks like, I don't know, they they took the, the raspberry jelly and some glitter and put it inside the cup, smeared it, you know, like swirled it in the cup and mm. then added the blue milk. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you can tell that Hanover has been gone for a while because this kind of stuff would never happen with him. No. 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 And whoever's doing that, whoever made that drink up, I mean, did they eat a couple gummies or something before they... Maybe. Maybe yeah, something happened little. because... They had the munchies and they thought that some, sounded like a good combination. Something was going on. I mean, maybe... Raspberry, maybe jelly and blue milk. Yeah, yeah, maybe at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning when you're starving and yeah, you had a few... Raspberry jelly and amoxicillin basically maybe, is what Maybe. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Not saying for sure, but there's a possibility that might work. All right, dude. You know, I always said that I could probably make a lot of money back when I was younger... You know, mm-hmm. coming out of the bars at like one or two o'clock in the morning, I was going to get like a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and just yeah. hang out, at, uh, you know, or, or bologna sandwiches. Yeah, you know yeah. what? You know what I would have given for how much I would have paid for one of those if I came out of a bar at like two o'clock in the morning and the guy was selling <laughs> bologna sandwiches. I'd have been like, how much? He's like, they're four fifty a piece. I'm like, give me five of them. Yep. Yeah. 
I never did it. I should have done it. See? You know, uh, you're still young. You could still do it. I guess. I mean, Colonel Sanders did it. He was in his 60s. He, he, That's right. That's yeah. right. I could probably do that. That's probably a good idea. Now someone's going to take it and go, ooh, that's a good idea. Watch. We're going to see like a little pop-up coming up all over the place around bars now with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There you go. And mine would have peanut butter and jelly with bacon on it. And I could ask a premium oh. price for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On toast. I can good. make them like right fresh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm kidding. But neither you nor I would eat them at this point in our I know. In I, our I can't journeys, eat. I can't. Right? I know. I can't eat it. But mm, does sound good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I digress. All right. There we go. So, David, are you excited about the person you're interviewing tonight? I Well, you know, what happened last week, I'm surprised they decided to come back on the show. That's true. They, I would have been outraged if I was that person. Well, you know, they were very gracious and very kind <laughs> and said that they would work around the schedule and they could possibly make it and well they're here tonight so right yeah mm-hmm. uh-huh all right so um i you know this has been an idea dave and i have had for years and we've talked about it and we've just never done it and last week this is no joke with the disney crush podcast and people that know us well know this is very true it's not uncommon for us the morning of our podcast two hours before our podcast, 15 minutes before our podcast to say, what should we talk about tonight? Um, we'll, we'll like, we'll talk about it like throughout the week. Like, what are we going to do? And we're like, I don't know. And Dave, what do you always tell me? Yeah. You know, we'll just get on and talk. It'll, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, everybody was asking us, what's going to be your 300th episode. And up until Two hours before we were getting ready to record last week, we really didn't know. And Dave pulled one out of the book that we have had in the back of our mind. We have all these show ideas in the back of our mind. We really have a problem. We need to write them down, Dave. Mm, (laughs) And I've been saying that for five and a half years. We need to write them down. One of the ideas we've been kicking around for years is interviewing one another. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to interview one another. I have some questions for Dave and he has some questions for me. (gasps) Wait a minute. I'm getting clumped. You mean that we're the special people? Yes. We are? (laughs) You are the most special interview I've ever had. We, there are questions about Disney, right? And then there are probably some questions about the podcast, I would think. Yeah. That's what I did. I'm kind of thinking we kind of mix it up. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. Any personal questions? Because I didn't. I mean, I can come up with some on the fly, definitely. No, I mean, I'm not going to ask you what color your underwear is or anything like that. <laughs> good. All right. <laughs> How are you doing, Dave? I'm good. That you, doesn't uh, count as a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for an answer, but I didn't get one. Okay. Uh, oh, you're waiting for an underwear answer? No, you're not going to find out. <laughs> um, well, uh, girls first. Courtesy. Okay. Okay. I'm going to curtsy. Okay. Oh, you can curtsy if you want. All right. I'm nervous. And we didn't, we have no idea what we're going to ask each other too. This is kind of scary. No, no, no. We probably should have told each other yeah, what we were going to say. So it, yeah, probably because there'll be a lot of dead yeah, space here. That's all right. We'll figure it out. We, I have a really good editor who can edit oh, out dead okay. space. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't, that's not a very good first answer, first question, but I, you think I've been doing this longer. So was there anything at, at Walt Disney World that you were looking forward to that was a letdown for you? Anything you were excited about that when you finally did it was a letdown? O- overall, like when I first started going yeah. or no, recently? No, I don't know. I, that, I, don't, I think anything that you were excited about that when you finally went and did it, it was a letdown. Um, mm. Well, I would say that a lot of the... Mm. I think for you, maybe Tron was a letdown. Yeah, but I thought you were talking like, like when I first started going. No, no, it wasn't. Oh, no. I'm no. talking about anything. Yeah, well, Tron, yeah, Tron was a lit down, that for sure. But I mean, still okay. But mm-hmm. I think for me, mm. oh, now Andy's texting me, Dave. Of course I, he is. He know, wants to be on the show every week. He really does. And he, you know, he told me he's like, I like it when you mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we need to stop mentioning his name. He's no Kevin Curtis Allen. Let's just put it that way. Oh my God, I got to turn this off because I'm not doing this ten- again tonight. I have a very special guest that I'm interviewing. Well, you know, one of my lit downs, I think was, uh, I know this is going to sound crazy, but was the fireworks show. Okay. Now there was one at 
Hollywood Studios, the Star Wars one. Oh, remember that one? Yeah. That was really good. But the one at Magic Kingdom, this was, now I'm going back years and years ago. It just, I don't know, it just mm-hmm. never impressed me too much. But now lately with the projections and all that kind of stuff, they've kind of upped their game. But that was, that was kind of one of the things that kind of was a lit down for me was, okay. I'm like, you know, why don't people get so crazy about this? It's not that great. I remember that Star Wars fireworks show, the, the first the first version of it, because then they toned it down. The first version of it was in your, it was hot. Oh, yeah. Those fireworks were close. And you were and, on it, yeah. Yeah, and I really questioned the safety of that. Mm-hmm. And I think we were probably right about that, because Disney then toned it down. Mm-hmm. It was intense, that original Star Wars fireworks show. Yeah, that that got me, jo- that one got me jazzed for fireworks. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then I would, then I was comparing all the fireworks to that one. And it just, that's, I think that's what it was. I was like, oh, okay, was well, down. it was mm-hmm. a letdown. So that would be my letdown. Okay. I say they bring back Star Wars. They need to bring it back. They brought yeah, back, they, do. they look what they bring back. They bring, they always bring stuff back. Yeah, they should yeah. bring it back. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tony Ann, what's one of the most surprising things that has come from doing the podcast? Well, I think last week's show is, it's evident that that's, when we started this podcast, we did not go into it thinking we were going to, we thought we'd have people that listened. We hoped that we'd have people that listened. But the fact that I'm getting text messages right now, and the fact that people came from all over the country to see us a few months ago, uh, the fact that I wake up in the morning and there's a message from one of our listeners who are in fact family and friends now. Um, I didn't know I was going to get that, that rewarding feeling that we have these people in our lives now that are our real friends, real friends, not something superficial. It's, these are real friendships. And, um, yeah, I didn't expect that at all. So, yeah. Yeah. I concur. Very cool. I thought we were just going to talk about Disney and, you know, do dining reviews and, and ride the rides and tell people about them. I didn't, I didn't expect the personal relationships that we've built. The, the people that I talk to before I go to the bathroom in the morning <laughs> and right before I close my eyes at night. Yeah. It's, it's been crazy. It's kind of like if you go back 30 years, 40 years, and if you were to tell, you know, some, well, I'm just, I mean, some of you guys are, I mean, weren't even born, but if you, you know, we're, go, we're old. So if you go back 30, 40 years and you'd say, pretty soon you're going to be able to have a, 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 like a computer in your hand. You can just take a picture and it's going to show right up and you can send it to somebody and it'll take two seconds to send it to them. You'd be, you would say, no, that's never going to happen. It's never yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And when we started the podcast, if you would have told us now, five years later, almost going on six years, what's happened with all the friends we've made, all the, all the, all just everything that's happened to us over the six, these last five or six years, we would say the same thing. We'd like, no, there's no way that's going to happen. What do you mean there's going to be 30, 40, 50 people come see us and hang out with us in the parks when we're there? No, it's never going to happen. No, it's it's not going to happen. But I thought that was the big time. I thought, you know, I went, I went to other podcast meets. I, and I've talked about this and I, I thought, oh, gee, you know, we're, we're small potatoes compared to that. We'll never have that. And I think what we have is it, maybe it's not as, as extravagant as that kind of thing. Um, you know, we're jumping up and down with stockings on our heads and uh, tissue boxes on our butts, but you know, and they're having big parties in, in Pandora, but <laughs> Where I think, I don't know. I think it's more fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Facts. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I got one for you. All right. Is there anyone, a real person in your life today, a living live person that you know, that you would love to take to Disney to show them your Disney? Dave's Disney. Show them somebody that maybe doesn't go to the parks and you want to show them your Disney. If someone said, why do you go so much? Who do you want to take and show your Disney to? Wow. That's a lot of people. <laughs> you have a lot of people? Oh yeah. There's a lot of people. You know, I, here's, here's what I get. 
Okay, my doctor. Mm -hmm. He's a doctor. Mm -hmm. Family family physician, and so he's probably doing pretty good. Yeah. And he, you know, I, when I go in there, sometimes I have my Disney Crush shirt on, and we've he've taught. You know, we he's been my doctor for thirty years. Mm -hmm. He knows I do a podcast, and he's like, you know, it's just too expensive. It's it's not. I don't I don't like anything about it. I don't want to go back. And I get that. And you can't make somebody like it. Right. But I think that we've taken so many people that have been naysayers, like our brother Carlo and Marcelo, who, mm -hmm. when I say we're, they're naysayers, they were, I don't ever want to go there. And now they've been, but they didn't have great experiences right. for whatever right. reason. Never want to go back. Don't care anything about it. Too expensive. Too crowded. Can't, in, no, don't want anything to do with it. Somehow we convinced them to go. They went with us. Mm -hmm. And they were asking us, how can I get a annual pass Yeah, for my whole family? Yeah. I'm ready. To, I yeah. would buy an annual pass to, to this part, to the, to the, to Walt Disney World. Yep. So the, the thing when people say it's too expensive, it just makes me crazy is it is, it's expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. It's expensive. It's not for, it's not for everyone. It's very expensive. You have to have some disposable income probably to enjoy it. But if you are somebody who goes to ball games or concerts or Broadway shows, all of those things are expensive too. And for the amount of hours, so if, if Magic Kingdom is open from nine o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, that's 14 hours of entertainment for a hundred some 150 bucks. You could spend that much on a concert ticket, on a Broadway show that lasts two hours on a sporting event that, you know, maybe last two or three or four hours, maybe. And, you know, the price of the food and the souvenirs, that's all the same. They're all expensive at all those places. If you go to Disney on ice with your kids, the souvenirs are insane. And the hot dogs are 12 bucks. And, you know, so I think the value is still there. If you think of it that way, if you think, yes, the ticket's expensive, it's $150 for one day and you got to bring the whole family. And so that, but if you're the, if you're the kind of family that go to Disney on ice, which is a two hour show, it's not that much more expensive. It's, and you're getting your value is much bigger. So right. that's always my argument. And then if you're in, if you're inclined to get an annual pass, that's, I mean, when annual pass holders complain, it it makes me bananas because Disney doesn't owe us anything. We we if you have the highest, I I did the math once, and the, um, my numbers are going to be off here, but if you have the highest, uh, most expensive pass, Disney is giving you admission to the park. It's something like twelve dollars a day. I I don't I could be off. It's it's like that though. When you three hundred sixty five days. Divided by the price of the most expensive pass, it's nominal. And uh, you're, you, maybe you can't go 365 days a year, but that's not Disney's fault. Disney is giving you the opportunity to go, you know, as much as you want with that pass. Now I got to do the math because it's going to make me crazy. But go ahead. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's a good deal. Yeah. And a credit pass is $13.99. $13 so $13.99. Divided by 365 days. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's three dollars and eighty-three cents a day. Well, gosh, now it's really, really reasonable. <laughs> it's three dollars and eighty-three cents a day. See, I knew I'd figure this out. Uh, twelve dollars doesn't sound right. Yeah, twelve dollars yeah. is expensive. I wouldn't do so, it. So, so yeah, Disney owes you nothing. I think I figured out if you went like ten days a year, it was twelve dollars. But yeah, so yeah, so there you go. Three dollars and eighty-three cents a year. Hey, it's a good it's deal. It's, it's a good I'm, deal. I'm still wrong. It's a good <laughs> if deal. If you go 10 days, it's, it's a, like over 140. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. No, yeah, no I'm not good with the math. No, Actually, you're, not. Really you're not. You're really not. Today, you're, you're, you're <laughs> off your game tonight. Yeah, that, that 10 days is going to be I way I haven't eaten since, you know, a very long time, babe, so my brain cells are dying. <laughs> you got mush on the brain like me. Okay, see? I'm spending a lot of time underwater right now. Mm, that's what it is. You got went in a uh, swimmer's ear and you can't hear mm -hmm. it. Okay, Tony Ann. If you could have any, a lot of minor podcast related, I'm sorry. Okay. But if, well, okay. if you could have anyone on the show in the Disney universe, who would it be and why? Anybody. That's almost the anybody. same question you gave me. Yeah. 
Yeah, but in the whole Disney universe? Yeah, like you can just anything. We've already had Bob Chapek. I mean, how much bigger can we get? Well, that's true. And he's been on several times and he's a little salty yeah, now. He's, he's getting a little. He's, he's, a, he's a regular. He's a regular, I dare yeah. say. He's a regular guest. Um, ooh, anyone. Mm -hmm. Do they have to be alive? Um, I'm going to say yes, just because. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, you know, don't say Walt. You know, no, no, I wasn't going to say Walt. I was, I was thinking Marty Sklar, but that's okay. Um, anyone in the Disney universe? I mean, Bob Gurr is out there, but he does a lot. He's like, he he does a lot of interviews. He's already talked to a lot of people. If you want to hear what Bob Gurr has to say, you could just Google it, and there's like a multitude of of interviews out there. And he even still does tours in Disneyland, I think. So. Anyone in the Disney universe, I know you all expect me to say Mr. Tight Pants, but that's not, no, that's not it either. Hmm. Surprising. Hmm. That's really hard, Dave. Huh. I asked you this question before, a long time ago, and you said Panda. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not impressed by, by vloggers. <laughs> I am one. You know, I'm like, not, I'm not impressed by, by people that are like pretentious, like I'm a Disney celebrity. Cause I, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't, we don't consider ourselves that we, we're just people that talk about Disney. I guess like somebody like Mark Davis, um, well, he's not alive. <laughs> Is Tony Baxter alive, right? Cause he's a, he, he just, he was supposed to do that thing that I don't even know who's alive and who's dead anymore, Dave. I've stumped, I've stumped the sensei. Well, Raleigh Crump just died cause he would have been a good one. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think truthfully, I think. Like John Favreau, I think would be fascinating to talk to. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, he, I always think, first of all, I would, I would, I would tease him about Rudy because <laughs> mm. that's one of my movies, Rudy. Um, you know, his first foray into directing was Elf. And if you've ever seen him talk about that and, uh, and now think of how far he's come, you know, he's. Mr. Mandalorian mm. and Iron Man and all of those things. And uh, I, I think he'd be really cool to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Jean one. Favreau, I think. Good one. Good one. You're going to cut all my hemming and hawing out. Oh, right? yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'll, you know, okay. you got a good podcast editor here. Oh, I know I do. I have the best. <laughs> See, and my questions are a little bit of, a lot about Disney. So that's it's okay. Work uh, working okay. out. It's working out. Okay. So I, I tease you relentlessly about. The fact that you go back to the same restaurants, you you don't try new things. So out of everything that we've talked about over the years, you listen to other podcasts where they talk about food incessantly. I'm not going to say the name of the podcast that does that because it would upset Kevin. Um, what restaurant would you like to try next? So money's no object. What restaurant is out there at Disney that mm. you would like to go to you and Veronica, what would you like to try next? Oh, do I? I'm paying. Okay. Do so I, there's no budget. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Okay. Do I just one or can I have two? Yeah, no, you can have whatever you want. I'm okay. going to give you well, a. I'm gonna, uh, first one I'm going to say is Citra Coast. Oh, okay. And then probably, which one, uh, is it Boathouse or Flying Fish, that ever, that's, which is better? Which one do you prefer? I like Flying Fish. Okay. Then I'm, that's the yeah. one. I knew there was, okay, I'm going to say, Citra Coast or, and Flying Fish. All right. Yeah. You want to go signature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. If I'm paying, I guess you're okay. You know, well, signature you, all the way. You offered, so I'm going there. <laughs> those are two. Those are two of my favorite restaurants, yeah. actually. Um, yeah. I think I think you guys would also like uh, Sanaa. I think mm -hmm. that would be cool for you guys to try. But yeah. And 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 if I get a third one, I'm going to say California Grill because you always talk about California Grill that me and Veronica should go there. You should. I yes. just don't know why we don't. We I know we get stuck at the same things. And I know I'm gonna. Yeah, but we're just gonna spread our wings and fly now that you're paying. So. Oh, okay, good. I'll tell Richie. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, and then you know, I've been just trying to get you to get get to Geyser Point for a bison burger. I, I can't know. even get you to do that. So. Well, I know, but now it's gonna be hard because I can't enjoy that really, really like I want to. <laughs> you know the fries. You can't and, eat the maple bacon jam. Oh, I can't. No. Oh. You're going to be okay. All right. All right. Um, here we go. Let's see. My turn. Mm-hmm. You have just won a contest, Tony Ann. 
Did you know that? Did you know you just won? No. Oh, you did. I, I know. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did. And you can become a cast member for the weekend, not a day, but for the weekend. And you get to work anywhere on Walt Disney property, wherever you would like. Where would it be and why? Oh, goody. I think I want to, I want to be. <laughs> you want to be Mickey? I think I want to be Anna and Elsa, one of them. <laughs> First of all, people would come in and they'd see me and they'd be shocked. Cause... No, they wouldn't. Not no, not now. Look, I mean, seventy-five hard. Hello. Yeah, I'm still fifty-one years old, Dave. You can't take <laughs> away fifty-one. <laughs> hey, come so, on. Now. No, but I'd love to be a princess and and see the little girls and talk to them and oh yes, thank you for coming to my kingdom. Oh yeah, oh. that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh wow. See, yeah, I didn't. I didn't... I, I... Yeah, I'd like that. I'd like to talk to little girls and and boys and talk about my character and, you know. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I would love that. I didn't expect that one, but that was that's good. Okay. I love seeing the kids how excited they when we go to see characters and you see how excited the kids are. Yeah. I mean, I could even be Mickey because then I'd be then you know, I could just be Mickey. Right. And, I know. Cuz I mean, then you'd have people like me blubbering on my shoulder. I know. Do you know? Like, how much- oh my god, Mickey. I love you so much. I want to leave you. Yeah. Can you imagine oh, the cost yeah. to clean that uniform? That that cost when the people like me blubber on his yeah. shoulder. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's gross. Oof. A lot of snot. Yeah. All right, Dave, you ready? All right, hit me. You love Animal Kingdom. Everybody knows you love Animal Kingdom, right? Oh, I do. I do. But what do you think is missing from that park? Oh wow, they got great food. Got some really good rides. They got the safari. They got great shows. Got great shows. They got water, waterfalls everywhere. Great, huge, big, beautiful tree with birds that fly right over your head. Oh, man. They got even street corn. I mean, they got music. I mean, it's, oh, they got ahi tuna nachos. I mean, they got the best ice cream on property. At That's true. And a pure. They had that amazing show that they took away, Kite Tales. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Uh, they got flotillas that go by when you're at Nomad Lounge. I don't know that you could actually improve on that part. I really, I think, mm, let me think for just one more second here. Let me think. They got some good restaurants. They got a lot of kiosks that have some amazing food. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say nothing. Th- that park is perfect. Oh, boy. That park is perfect. The park is perfect. The park is perfect. I, okay. I mean, if I'm, anything, okay. they might add one, like, Another roller coaster or thrill ride, something like okay. really amazing, like uh, Guardians, you know, throw something mm-hmm. in there like that, mm-hmm. or just add to the park, you know, maybe yeah. expand okay. it a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, but no, the park is perfect. I think they should keep it open later because I love Animal Kingdom at night. And oh, it's the best. A lot of times they close it at five, six, mm-hmm. seven o'clock. And that park is awesome at 10 o'clock at night. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, if you haven't done it yet, do yourself a favor and, and go at night. If you ever see that it's open late, yeah. And, I, and I'm and i a big proponent of, of hitting that park in the late afternoon when everybody else is leaving. Because everybody's been saying for years, you got to get to the park at Rope Drop so you can get to the safari right away. And if you go to the park when all those people are leaving, they're all done by 2, 3 o'clock. They're all leaving. You're coming in. You've got a good, you know, six hours uh, and and the lines are shorter. The safari is awesome at four or five o'clock, six oh, o'clock. It's the best, yeah. It really is. There's animals. The lions are just waking up and they're growling, and the the hyenas and painted dogs are up. And I I think Animal Kingdom After Dark is is yeah, that's good. Something well, I I agree. Know. I will have to agree on with you on that one. All right, mm-hmm. hit me, dude. Hit me. Oh, your turn. Okay. Iger has just hired you to bring more people to the parks. What -hmm. advice would you give him? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bring in more people to the parks. I don't want him to bring more people to the parks. See, this is the thing. I I like the parks when they're empty. I know. It's great. He wants wants to change the... He wants to get people in that have maybe left or said they won't come. Well, Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, you need to... You need to drive home what I just said. You need that. They need to take an, a new line with that. When when people say Disney is expensive, when people when he's interviewed by people and people say how expensive Disney is, he needs to say what I just said about 
go to a ball game, go to a, go to a concert, go to a Broadway show, go to, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not when you think about it that way, but what can we do in the park, um, to bring more people in that may, and you know, uh, not, not a new ride. Cause that's a billion dollar thing. Mm-hmm. Something, something easier than that. I think promotions that don't really in the grand scheme of things don't really cost Disney that much money. When we had the year of a million dreams a few years ago, and, and this is what's disappointing about the 50th anniversary and the hundredth anniversary. They're not really doing anything for us. The, the, the mega fans they're not i think disney should have done something like year of a million dreams with that with the hundredth anniversary um where you had this if you if you'll remember what the year of a million dreams was you'd you'd get on a ride so say you got on star tours and everybody in your capsule there they came in and they gave you something they gave you a, a pin or they gave you a, a coupon for an ice cream cone, or they gave you fast passes for for any ride in the park. And that really doesn't cost Disney much. I mean, when you think about the grand scheme of things, and it got people excited, and it made people want to want to go to the parks and see what they got. And, you know, some people got to stay in the Cinderella suite. You know what? That Cinderella suite's up there, whether somebody's sleeping in it or not. So you might as well let somebody sleep in it. So that kind of thing where where you have your guest in the park and you have a chance at getting something back from Disney. I think that's cool. And yeah. it really doesn't cost Disney all that much. Right. A few years ago, they they had go to Disney for free on your birthday. That was brilliant because... It, it that those couple of people whose birthday it was on that day, it really didn't cost operations wise. It didn't cost Disney all that much money for those couple of people whose birthday it was. And those people usually brought family with them who paid full price for their tickets. So that kind of thing, they don't do that anymore. No. Right. But and merch that, and hotel uh, resort stays, food, yeah. everything. Right. So it, it I think something like that is smart and they, they need to look back at those things, promotions mm-hmm. like that. Some of your best advertising is word of mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody talks about pixie dust. You hear people talk, oh, I had the best meal or I had the best, but when they get pixie dusted, you hear about it all over the yeah. Facebook yeah, yeah. and they just talk mm-hmm. about their story and what happened and can't believe they did this or they did that. And those are the ones, those are the stories that resonate with people. Yeah. I remember like my parents used to have... Uh, passes to Bush Gardens used to have annual passes. And I think Scott and Karen have, 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 have mentioned this too, that when you are a pass holder at those parks and you bring people with you, you get an annual pass holder discount on guest tickets. Hmm. That, that's, I mean, if they gave annual pass holders 10% off guest tickets, I mean, mm-hmm. that's like 10 bucks. What I mean, not, you know, 15 bucks. And we're bringing guests with us. So, I don't know. I think I think things like that don't really and don't don't really hit the bottom line all that much, and might bring more people to the parks. Mm, good one. Mm-hmm. I think it would. Yep. All right, dude. I got a question for you. Do you have any regrets about TDC twenty twenty three? Is there anything we did that you didn't like, or anything you wish we had done more of, or is there anything we could do differently if we do a twenty twenty four? Mm. Or do you not want to do it ever again? Mm. No, I mean, it was a little stressful, but once in it, you know, leading up to it, the anticipation of leading up to it, the whole planning thing, and then then this making, you know, hoping it just goes off okay and everybody's happy and everybody has a good time. Looking back on it, it was probably one of the best times I've ever had at Disney. Mm -hmm. So, no regrets. I can't really think that we could have added much more because I think the Dapper Day thing was brilliant. Um, Yeah, it was really nice. I think the way that the party happened, the the, uh, sub party with, you know, the Dave's getting the treehouse was amazing. Mm -hmm. That just worked out perfectly. It just seemed like everything just kind of fell in line in the games and the run that Tori put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it kind of, it kind of 
evolved into its own thing. It almost wasn't the TDC anymore. It was more like a just a gathering of friends and mm -hmm. a, and and some and fun times and enjoying yeah. enjoying the parks. Yeah. So I don't know that I would change too much. And okay. if we did it cool. again, I think we could maybe change a few little things here and there, or maybe I'd but, like it to be. You know, my my whole thing was I didn't want it to be. I didn't want to be over scheduled, and then we had all these things scheduled. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. I have to see. Yeah. I think that's just the nature of this group. We're planners. Yeah, I know. It, that's the way it happens. I know. We we did talk about that. But we want everybody to have enough time for, to themselves. Like, they didn't have to be committed to whatever we were doing. Yeah. But I think, you know, our bunch of, you know, friends are like that. They know. So. Yeah. No, I think it was, you know, went out really good. Okay. I was really happy okay, with cool. it. Yeah. All right. Um, Mine's kind of in that realm, but uh, is, and kind of winding down. I think we're kind of winding down. Yes, Tony, are we? I got a couple more. Okay. But that's okay. Uh, is there any downside to doing the podcast? Any regrets that you have for doing the podcast at all? I worry sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. I uh, Exposing our lives as much as we have, we're kind of open books. And um, I I have some concern about that. Uh, I just, you know, and that's that's one of, you know, my husband, we, we talk about Rich being grumpy and blah, blah, blah. That, that is one of his genuine concerns is that, people know a lot about us and we don't know a lot about them. Mm. So it's weird. And you have to, you, and I think that's one thing that I think is hard. And I've talked to Kurt about this and I think I've talked to you about it too, that you guys, you hear about our lives every single week. You know, our kids' names, you know, when our birthdays are, you know, you know, where we live in general. Um, and there's so there's two of us and there's hundreds maybe more of you and it's hard for us to i don't want to put this weird but if we don't re like i i have this thing on our group where i'll put people's birthdays and i started it and then when i started it i i started to regret it because if i miss somebody's birthday and i have I missed Selena's birthday recently. I missed Jen Pulliam's birthday. I've missed, I think I just missed Carlin's birthday. Um, it happens all the time because I, you can't possibly have everybody's birthday. Like, so I'll start something with good intentions and then I'll worry that I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings because I didn't remember them because like I said, there are hundreds of you guys and there's two of us. So I think, I, I think I remember when we were planning a meetup. It was, it was actually the last G3. We were, we were having breakfast uh, and a bunch of us were having breakfast at Trattoria Al Forno. And I was helping to schedule those breakfasts and to make the list of who was coming. And I reached out to one of our listeners and I said, do you want to have breakfast at Trattoria Al Forno? And the person said, yes, I want to have breakfast. Uh, so when I, when it all came out and the seating charts came out and everything and they realized they weren't having breakfast with me, <laughs> they, they were having breakfast with other people. They were like, I thought we were having breakfast together. And it was, that wasn't what I was asking. I was asking if they wanted to come to breakfast and there were going to be 60 of us there, but it, it made me feel terrible. Like I had, I had let this person down and, um, and that's weird for me. Like, cause I'm just Tony Ann. I'm not anything. Why do you want to have breakfast with me when you could have breakfast with Tori Hunt? You know, she's a lot cooler than me. Oh yeah, absolutely. Trust me. Mm. So that kind of thing, that kind of thing where people, they misunderstand. They, uh, actually that breakfast at Tutoria and I don't, Jen Batchelder, I want you to know I'm not talking about you because that breakfast at Tutoria originally, originally was just going to be breakfast, me and Michael and Jen and Madison, and then 60 people got added on to that breakfast. So that, I was not talking about you, Jen, but you, we were supposed to sit together from the beginning. Yeah, but that's kind of how things happen, though, in this group. Yeah. You know, it yeah, just yeah. kind of snowballs. Yeah, it is and, hard. It's hard to crawl all this in. It really mm -hmm. is. And yeah. that's, that's why whenever we say we're going to have a meet, like we started with TDC, we're not going to have table service, we're not going to have table service meals. But what happens is a group of five friends decides they want to go eat at Rosa Mexicana, right? Mm. Well, five of us are going and we don't want to hurt 
that person's feelings. So we ask them and that person is traveling with this person. So now we have them coming and then that person is traveling with this person and we, and we're friends with everybody and we don't want to hurt. So everybody's coming now. So it's not, so we are having these big meals. We are having these big meals that, that even though we said we weren't going to do that, we have no choice because if you don't, you know, if you, if you leave somebody out, then, then you look like a jerk. And so, so you can't leave anybody out. Which episode of our podcast are you proudest of? Oh my gosh. That was one of my questions for you. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I'll answer uh, it too. I gotta think about um, it. I'm proud of? Oh. Although they, they drive me crazy, I think that the ones that we have our listeners on, like five on five and and the kids, which we keep talking about, but we probably should do more of. Um, those I think are some of my proudest and most memorable ones. You know, when we in, when we involve our all our friends on the show, which is hard to do because there's only so many days podcasting a month, right? And so many people you can get on. Well, I think one another one was probably Carlo. We brought our brother-in-law mm-hmm. Carlo on. Yeah, that was a good one. After he poo pooed. Disney for so long and then he went and then we had him on and he got to eat some humble pie a little bit. That was probably good too. That was, that was not only a proud moment, but a fun moment and that we were able to take him and have him experience Disney like it should be experienced. Yeah. Not that we're that great, but we did, yeah. you know, we did pretty good. I think Tony Ann. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I think for, for me, some of the, some of the live streams we've done, I've really, I really put a lot of work into some of those live streams and we did one at the 50th anniversary where we looked back at 50 years of Disney. We had special guests on. We actually did, um, we did a, a retrospective of, of 50 years of Disney. We had some guests. I think Mickey file came on and, and Steve Sanders from monorail tales came on and we looked back at, we each took a decade of the 50 years and that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of work, but it was really cool. So a lot of the live streams, I'm probably proud of things we've done in the group, the friends of Disney crush, uh, the, during the pandemic we did, I I just, I thought we were going to be closed for two weeks. That's what they told us. Two weeks, two Mm. weeks to flatten the curve. Right. So we're going to do a picture post for 14 days, 14 days of Disney pictures. So one day post your favorite restaurant, second day, post your favorite resort, third day, post your favorite attraction. And it got to be day 75, post your kids asleep in the stroller post. (laughs) And, but we, we did it. We came up with every day that the parks were closed. Our listeners had pictures that they sent us of their, them, their families at the parks during better times. It really built a sense of community. We got to know each other a lot better. I I can think of a few people that I really didn't know before our picture posts. Uh, Heidi is one of them that she was very active in that. And um, so, yeah, the, that I, I think I'm proud of that we did that as a community during during the shutdown most proud podcast probably um the first one because we actually did it you don't want to listen to it no but no it's bad it took a lot to finally do it so all right that was my question to you you have any more for me the last one i have for you is looking back on our 300 show looking back all mm-hmm. the shows that we did is there anything that you would do differently i think i'd i'd Sometimes I worry about that I say too much, that I I don't temper myself and I, I don't hold back. And I I feel like I do overshare a little bit about my personal life. And I think that does make my husband a little uncomfortable. When, when we're in the car and the podcast is on, he'll look at me like, I can't believe you just said that. He's like, thanks a lot, hon. <laughs> like, so I think I think I would... I would kind of hold back a little bit of my real life, but I'm just, I mean, I, I, I don't know any other way of doing this. We, we talk about our lives and that's part of it. So yeah, we're kind of an open book. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way sometimes too much. 
I have to mm-hmm. catch myself sometimes too. I'm like, eh, I probably should have yeah. said that. Yeah. Well, and I'm getting better I, at not saying things. So. Yeah, we try. And <laughs> sometimes I'll say, I'll call him like five minutes after we're done recording. Can you edit that out? <laughs> and usually he doesn't. He goes, no. And there's why I'm not going to. I'm like, okay. You ready? Yeah. Hit me. After 300 episodes, 301 now, because this is the end of the episode, would you still ask me? Well, of course I would. Oh, I had okay. no, there was nobody else I, I would have my breath for a minute there. <laughs> there was nobody else I would have asked. Yeah. No. I knew it when I, when I, I've loved podcasts forever, listened to podcasts mm-hmm. for years and years and years. And then when I got it in my crazy little head that I was going to do a pod, I wanted to do a podcast and I knew it was going to be about Disney. There was just no hesitation. I'm like, my whole thing was, what if she says no? Then what? Then is this going to be me? I don't know. What am I going to do? You know, I There's just thought no yeah. chance that I was going that I would have said no. Well, I wasn't there, sure. You know, you're so busy with your wa- you know, the family and your work. I'm like, you know, that's a lot. It's a lot of work doing a podcast. And yeah, you didn't even hesitate. You, no, you, I was excited. You didn't yeah. even hesitate. But then we didn't like didn't do anything. Like we talked about it, and then we didn't do anything for for months and months and oh, months. Oh, it was a long time. I know. Yeah, well, I got overwhelmed. Yeah. I got overwhelmed by the whole process of it right, and the technical right. part of it. And mm-hmm. and if you know me, my personality. If I decide I'm going to do something like that, like, which is kind of a big task, I overthink it and I research and research and research and research to the point to where I'm making notes and notebooks. And and then it right. got to the point to where I think I got to the point to where I felt so overwhelmed. I At one point, I, I felt like I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And so it was like six or seven months. And yeah, it was probably, a long time. And you're probably thinking, is, are we going to ever do this podcast? But you never bugged <laughs> me. You never said anything. And then I finally just, yeah. I just said, you know, David, knock it off. Let's just, we jumped in. I just said, let's get to it. And I, I went, you know, spent hours and hours and hours every night coming home and practice, you know, trying to figure out yeah. how to do it. Some of our listeners have actually gone back and listened to the first few episodes. I don't recommend it to anyone, but have you gone back and listened? You know, only because, um, I forget who somebody was talking about that they went back and I, and I thought. And it's been Kate ye- listened to every episode. I yeah. know that. And, it, and Dan Austin went back recently because yeah. he and was afraid it was going to be a Jeopardy question. Well, the audio was terrible. Audio was um, just a disaster. And it, well, you know, it's like anything. There's a learning curve and I guess it's there and we all start somewhere. But yeah, it was pretty bad. But I did go back and listen to the first one or two <laughs> for some reason doing some research. And I thought, ooh, that, mm. No, not so good. (laughs) It's pretty rough. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Probably the biggest surprise, if anybody's asking me what the surprise was from this podcast, and I talk about all the friends we have, and yeah, yeah, that's beautiful and great. And I have 19 messages on my phone right now in the time we've recorded this this podcast from all our friends who are wonderful, and I love you all. But probably the most surprising thing from this podcast is the relationship I have with you in that people don't believe me when I say we were in the same family for almost 20 years, maybe more than 20 years before we actually sat down and had this Mm. conversation. Like you were my husband's sister's husband. We, we weren't close and people don't, people don't understand that. We knew each other. We saw each other at holidays. We, we hugged each other and we would spend the night by the campfire and we'd learn a little bit more about each other in little tiny pieces Mm. once a year for 20 something years. And then when we started talking every week, multiple times a week, we became what we are now, which is brother and sister. And there's, I mean, I talk to you almost every day and, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, people don't, people, I don't think people realize that, that we, we knew each other. We were, we loved each other. We were friendly, but we, we didn't know each other that Not well. Real, no, we didn't we see each other. Yeah. Picking up the, yeah. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that I have you because I could, you know, I might call you in five minutes and tell you something. So. <laughs> yeah. It's been pretty cool. I'm, I'm just yeah. overwhelmed by the whole thing and. Never thought that this podcast would bring about our relationship and the relationships we've had with other people too. Yeah, just great. I think Veronica said that the other night. She goes, you know, you're going to have to keep going. You know that, right? <laughs> so when we got the book, 
she looked at me and she saw the tears coming down my face and she said, yep, you're going to keep going. Yep. You keep talking, you're going to stop. But no, I don't see you stopping. No, we're not going to stop. Michael, Michael, you want to say something? Come here. You want to say something to people listening? 300 episodes? What do you want to say? Because you're the big star. What's up? What's Did up? you make a lot of friends from the podcast? Yes. Who are your friends? <sighs> Scott. Of course, Scott. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. Okay, said so Scott and Kevin. Kevin. Hey. And if he doesn't say your name, don't feel bad. He just, you weren't in a movie. Are there any girls in the in the podcast you're friends with? Kelly. Who? Uh, Karen, Karen. Oh, Karen. Okay, he's friends with Karen. Okay, good. Whose birthday is April, August twenty second? Uh, meh. Meh. Madison. Meh. Madison. Madison. Sorry. <laughs> Madison. Madison's August twenty second. Do you know who's August nineteenth? Yes, Samantha. Yes. All right. Michael has lots of birthdays on his calendar. I have lots of birthdays that I forget in the in the group. And and Dave has a lot of editing to do. <laughs> it's okay. It's the way it goes. So episode three hundred one's in the books. Okay. The most riveting interviews we've ever had. So that's us. Yeah. What? I don't know what he's saying, dude. <sighs> yes, Nana's birthday is in August, too. All right, go ahead. Me and Uncle Dave want to say good night. Yes. Good night. Yeah, good night. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. We're going to say good night, and then I'll be right there. I'll get you dessert. Yes. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a good thing you're patient because that's one thing in 300 episodes. My husband has never managed to keep Michael out of the garage. <laughs> no, he's not doing his job. Yeah, he, I thought he was part of this, but he's not, I guess. No. no that's okay. He, that's a great way to end the show with Michael. So perfect. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Friends of Disney Crush. That's where you can find us and our friends. Dave, you got anything, any other uh, in your little list of things to read at the end there? Well, I think we just both want to thank you all for all the laughs, all the time spent together on the live feeds, on the Zooms, and in the parks. So just so unbelievable that we have such a great bunch of people that come together, so different, but yet so alike. You know, kind of like the misfits. We're like misfits. We're definitely misfits. And this is uh, for the older people in the group, but Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the misfits. We all come together, though. Island and Misfit Toys. Yep. yep. They all came together and helped Santa Claus get the presents to everybody. <laughs> in. So. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's it. Nope. That's it. That's it, Tony. All right, Dave. This 301's been, in the books. 301's in the book. You know where to find us. Uh, this has been the Disney Crush Podcast. And until next week, we'll see you guys later. Bye.